Let's take a look at section 9.2, Possibility Trees and the Multiplication Rule. Now, what this section deals with are counting problems where you have a multi-step process. And so there are several ways to do the first step and several ways to do the second step. And you want to know how many different ways could you make all of those selections to get through the entire operation. And one tool for that type of problem is called the possibility tree. So that's a diagram that's going to keep track of all those different possibilities for that multi-step process. And you want to look at how many different ways can you reach the end of a branch of this tree and reach what we call a leaf, which is a terminal point on this diagram. And uh, in this particular example, if you count through all the, the leaves of that tree, there are 10 of them. So that tells us there's 10 ways that this process could unfold. Okay. Now, this is an example from the book that deals with two teams playing a series of games. And the rules for this particular contest are that if a team wins two games in a row or three games total, the series ends. And so you see the series could be very short. It could be two games if one team wins two games in a row at the beginning. It could be longer. You know, if they go back and forth and back and forth, it could go as long as five games. Okay. Um, now, notice, you know, as I was just saying this series could be rather short or it could be longer so we can't say in advance how many steps there are in this process it could be two it could be five or it could be somewhere in between um, and the possibility tree is a really good tool for handling that type of example where you could have some number of steps or you could have more than that number of steps um, because in a, this tree diagram, it's okay if some branches are longer and some branches are shorter. Now, of course, um, the possibility tree becomes less practical when there are more and more possibilities because then the tree gets rather convoluted. But it's a, it's a very helpful tool um, for keeping track of certain examples. Another tool that this section gets into and perhaps the really the main concept that's discussed in this section is the multiplication rule. Now the multiplication rule is not that useful for the previous example because the multiplication rule really counts on the fact that there are a set number of steps in this process. Okay and the way it works is if you know there are k steps in the process and you know how many ways there are to do the first step? We'll say n sub 1 ways. And the second step, n sub 2 ways. And all the way to the kth step, n sub k ways. Well, the total number of ways to do this entire process will be the product of those numbers. n sub 1 times n sub 2 all the way up to n sub k. That's the multiplication rule. Okay, so if you know how many steps there are and you know how many ways there are of doing each step along the way, then this tells you how to do how many ways there are for the entire operation to be performed. Okay. A lot of times this can involve something like, well, we have this many choices for step one and then we have this many choices for step two and so forth. Um, you know, maybe you're picking uh, from a, a list, you know, let's say a menu, you have column one, column two, column three, column four, and you know how many choices there are in the first column, and you know how many choices there are in the second column. Okay, that's a, an example where the multiplication rule would be really useful. Now, the multiplication rule gives rise to another concept that's discussed in this section uh, called permutations. 
So let me give you an example, and then we'll get into the, the more general statement here. Let's say you had 10 books on a shelf, and you wanted to select three of those books to be the next three books that you read. And you not only are you going to pick the three books, but you're going to choose them in a particular order. Because you want to know what you're going to read first, and then what you're going to read second, what you're going to read third from these 10 books. That would be referred to as a three permutation from a set of 10 elements. Okay, you're picking three books in order from a set of 10 books. Okay, so an R permutation of a set of N elements is an ordered selection of R elements taken from a set of N elements. Okay. And we've got some notation here, P and R. Um, if we think about how the multiplication rule would apply to this example I gave, well, we would think of it as a three-step process. You're picking the first book, that's step one, and you have ten choices. Then you pick the second book. Well, now there's a, a book that's been removed, so now you have nine choices. And then you have a third book, a third step. And now you have eight choices. So the multiplication rule would say you have 10 times 9 times 8 ways of selecting those three books in order. Okay, the, or, the fact that there's an order here is very important. That's what distinguishes a permutation from a combination, which we saw earlier in the course. So the formula is n factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, in the case of that book example, it would be 10 factorial over 7 factorial, which is indeed 10 times 9 times 8. Okay, so the multiplication rule is, is where that formula comes from. Um, let me mention that on any scientific calculator, somewhere, in a menu or maybe a shift of a button, you're going to have a function key that will let you do permutations and combinations and factorials. Those are usually grouped together near in near proximity to each other on the calculator, maybe in the same menu, because these are all very closely related concepts. Okay, permutations, combinations, and factorials. They're all counting formulas, and it's just a question of, you know, what, what type of counting are we doing, and does the order matter, and so forth. The next section we get into involves the addition rule, which is actually quite a different thing. It, it handles a different type of question. So here we're talking about sets, and if you have disjoint sets, then you can just add the number from one set to the number from the other set. But of course, it gets more complicated than that. And oftentimes, you do have sets that overlap, and then we need to talk about what to do then. Um, and all of that um, is dealt with in the next section. Okay, hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.